Now we're going to have a look at the advanced settings of the flight controller. So into this menu, the first thing we can see there is EXP, which stands for exponential. What this is, is the sensitivity of our remote control, or the exponential curve we want the remote to operate in. So we can see here there's two axes, one is X and one is Y. The X is the input that we need from the remote, and the Y is the result. So we've got three different ones set up here. With the throttle on the left hand side, you can see there that for a lot of X, Y doesn't do very much. So we're going to put in a lot of control input, and the aircraft's not going to respond very much. The next one across for the rudder, we can see there if we put in a little bit of X, then we get a lot of Y. So it's going to be very, very sensitive in rudder. And then we've got a flat curve on the right hand side there for pitch. So that's the exponential. So depending on what we're flying for, we can make the aircraft more or less sensitive based on what the input is through the remote. Next one down there is the sensitivity of the aircraft. So in attitude, braking and in yaw. So the further we turn these up, the more aggressive the aircraft's gonna become. And the more we turn these down, the less aggressive the aircraft is gonna become. So for example, the braking, uh, if we take our hands off in positioning mode, the aircraft will stop. If we've got the braking turned right up, it'll be very aggressive at doing so. Uh, and if we've got the braking turned right down, it might take a couple of meters to come to a stop. So it'll depend on, on what type of flying you're doing. Again, for filming, you might turn the braking right down. So we've got that nice, slow, smooth movement of the aircraft for your filming. Next one down is your gains. So here we're playing with the control theory of the flight controller. So what gains are is, I guess it's the difference between where the aircraft is at the moment and what the pilot has asked for. So the higher we turn the gains up, the more aggressive it's trying to get back to what, we're, what we want. Um, if we set them too high, then it'll overshoot and we get, get a bit of an oscillation in the aircraft. So we can turn the gains up from the manufacturer, which would mean that they're going to be above 100. And we can turn the gains down from what the manufacturer has specified, which means they'll be below 100. So that 100% mark is what the manufacturer has set for the aircraft. Next one down, we've got sensors. Sensors talking about the inertial measurement unit. This is the important component which keeps our aircraft in the air. In fact, a multi-rotor aircraft cannot fly without an inertial measurement unit, so very important. So here we can check out the values within the inertial measurement unit, and we can also do a calibration if need be, if there's been a problem. Other stuff down we've got here is remote control the signal loss, what you want the aircraft to do in the event of link loss. So we've got three options here. We've got hover, now we might be behind a building or a tree which is causing the link loss, so hover might not be the best option for us. We've got landing, but do we know where the aircraft's going to be for an auto land event? And there's a return to home. So return to home gives us the opportunity for the aircraft to climb, get direct line of sight back with the aircraft and potentially get link back, which is probably your best option. Next one down, smart return to home. This allows the aircraft to use its brains to figure out uh, how much battery, et cetera, it'll need to come home, uh, rather than the aircraft just sort of making it halfway back and auto landing. Um, enable vision positioning, the next one down there, that uh, turns on the ultrasonic sensor and the optical flow camera below the aircraft. And so that's um, you know doing some more accurate things with height and also analyzing the textures on the ground. So in the case that we lose GPS, we've got some sort of positioning ability. It is pretty limited, but it's there as well. And the last one there, we've got turn on front LEDs. So if you don't want those red LEDs at the front, we can actually turn those off. And that's the advanced settings of the flight controller.